Hey guys, it's been a few days since I last checked in, but in the next week or so, I will be attempting to record the entire suite for my studio studio recital, which will be happening like right after Thanksgiving. So now that I've learned all four movements, I need to really solidify all of them and get them up to a performance level. So the last few days I have been just kind of playing through all of the movements and working on some spots, but let's work on some of it together. Let's just start with the first movement. I know from the last few times that I've gone through this, that the trouble spots that I'm having now are the same trouble spots that I had when I was first learning it. So I think I'm going to have to do a lot of the same work that I did in the beginning just to get it back up to where it was because I have been focusing on the other movements more than this first movement lately. See, so it sounds pretty good, I think. <laughs> like, I I like the like phrasing that I'm doing and everything, but technically it's fallen behind a little bit since I haven't been working on it. So I'm gonna stop right there and work on those hard sections before I look any further. <laughs> I feel like I'm back in week one again. If you missed that vlog, by the way, you can go check it out right there. <laughs> okay, I just need to work on this some more. <sighs> um, I don't know why it's frustrating me today. <laughs> I feel like I just don't have the attention span right now. Like I'm going through it kind of fast. I don't know if it's faster than I want to take it at the performance tempo. I don't know, I don't really feel like working on this right now. So I haven't been recording these practice vlogs as much because I feel like while I get really good work done while I'm making them, it makes me feel like I have to practice perfectly <laughs> and I don't always practice perfectly because like right now I don't feel like I have the attention span to even do it and I really just want to lay down and play Animal Crossing. That's just what I want to do right now. but. Instead, I'm trying to practice this because I have a lesson tomorrow and I want to go over like the entire suite so I know that I need to get work done. <sighs> but normally I just, you know, take a break, sit down, do something, and then come back to it. But I feel like since I'm recording, I can't really do that. Hey guys, so I didn't practice anymore after that last clip that I just showed. I just didn't feel like practicing that night, so I just didn't go back to it. Um, I didn't have like a strict deadline or anything. So, well, I mean, I had a lesson the day after, I guess, but it wasn't like urgent enough that I felt like I needed to get work done even if, even though I didn't feel like it. So I just, I didn't practice anymore that night. So yesterday I had a lesson and I did a full run through of the suite. So I will show you some clips from that now. So I feel like I have kind of the phrasing down that I want, but now it's pulling all the techniques together since I focused kind of on one movement at a time, it's bringing them all up to the same level. So that was my first time running through the suite ever, <laughs> like from the first movement to the last. And I felt like it wasn't too bad. Um, my stamina was okay. The repeated double stops are a bit difficult and just getting all of the pieces to kind of fit together is a bit hard. So I'm going to work on solidifying each movement and I will do a few run throughs before I record it so that I get used to playing it from the beginning to end. So right now, I think I'll look at the second movement. In my lesson yesterday, we talked about kind of the timing and placement of certain notes in kind of the B section of this. So I'm going to work more on that now. Mm -hmm. 
So we talked a lot about how this section can sound kind of monotonous and how we can make it sound different. And I'm still deciding what I want to do where and solidifying all of that so that it doesn't sound too similar each time that it happens because this kind of figure is repeated a lot and I don't want them to all sound the same because that'll be boring. I'm also going to work on some tuning too because I don't feel totally comfortable yet. <laughs> Okay, now I'm gonna try putting this section back together. I feel a bit more comfortable now that I tuned this double stops. I used too much bow there. So my problem here is that on these sustained measures, I use a little bit too much bow and then I have to kind of catch up on the eighth notes. And I wanna stay kind of low in the bow so that these staccato eighth notes are easier to play and so that they sound better because they'll sound better in a lower part of the bow. So now I'm just figuring out what part of the bow I want to be in. Okay, so I just ran through the second movement to kind of put everything together and I was really happy with it at the end. My left thumb has just kind of been tensing up today and I'm trying to focus on keeping it relaxed and releasing it and letting it flow with the rest of my hand, but it just, I don't know, it keeps getting sore. So I don't really know what's changed because my left thumb used to be very tense. Like I would like really like, I don't know if I can do it now, but like it would go like this and I just did weird things with it and it was very tight and very tense and very uncomfortable. So I don't know kind of what's changed to make my thumb feel like that today. I'm just keeping an eye on it to make sure that it doesn't become a habit again because I worked really, really hard like my entire fall semester last year to break that habit and my thumb's been really loose and relaxed ever since. So I'm hoping that doesn't come back. Let's go to the third movement. So in my lesson yesterday, we worked a lot on letting the top voice lead because it's the melody and just barely hitting the string with the lower note on it so that we really hear the melody more than the harmony. So I'm going to focus on that today, mostly just in the first line at first and then the other places where it shows up. We'll get there. <laughs> so first I'm going to go through the first line fingering both lines, but only bowing the top line. And I want it to be really legato, really smooth, and really connected. Hey guys, as you can see, it's another day. I've got my Animal Crossing shirt on. Like this video if Animal Crossing has totally taken over your life since COVID started. <laughs> I'm obsessed. So my camera actually died the last time I practiced the rigor, which was two days ago. So I got a lot of good work done in the third and fourth movements. I think it cut out like halfway through the third movement. But today I'm going to start with the first movement, just go through it, see what I need to work on, which is probably the same hard places as the first time I learned it. So when I start this movement, I feel like I need to look at my viola and then back the music again. And when I do that, it changes the angle of absolutely everything and it creates a little bump in the sound. So I really, like, I can look at it to set it up before I put my bow on. Then I have to look at the music from there on out. I can't be doing this because I can hear it, but my bow hair is moving on the string and that's going to make a really bumpy sound. Okay, so my mic is actually over here. I forgot to move it, but I tested it out and it sounded okay. So 
I'm just gonna hold my bow up to the mic and move my head around and hopefully you will hear my bow hair move on the string. So all I was doing was moving my head just like this and that's how much my bow is moving. It's like a little ch 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 sound. <laughs> okay, gonna do it again and I'm not going to move my head around. <laughs> Do a full run through. <laughs> movement. Um, do I remember any of the first movement? I don't know. I think I was happy with the first movement. <laughs> oh, I felt like the triplets in the third line came a little fast. Just since it's the first time they're introduced, I feel like I can make them a little faster in the recap, but a little slower the first time around. And as I was playing them, I was like, oh, this is a little faster than I want to do that. Um, and once I've done sharing my thoughts, I'm gonna sit down and listen to this recording and see if I can hear that or if any different opinions come up. <laughs> Towards the end, I, I don't know, I got nervous even though I'm recording this to post on the internet just like I will be recording tomorrow to post on the internet also on YouTube but not on my own channel so my nerves really shouldn't be any different than they are right now and I shouldn't really be nervous right now because like if it sounds horrible I don't have to post it. You know, no one's no one's forcing me to post everything that I film. So I don't really know why I got nervous. Probably just because there's a camera and a microphone in front of me. <laughs> That's probably it. Um yeah, but I thought that was a pretty solid run. I would be pretty happy with it if it was a performance, I think, but I'm gonna go listen back to it and then if I have any interesting revelations, I'll share them with you. Okay, so I just listened back to it, and these are my thoughts. I wrote them down. Overall, I felt like it was a pretty good run-through, especially it was only my second run ever. Hopefully, if I review those things tomorrow morning, um, it's about 9 p.m. now, so I don't really want to practice anymore. Um, if I review those things tomorrow, then hopefully I should be good to record it tomorrow and get a recording that I'm happy with to send to my teacher for our studio recital video. Okay, so as you just saw, I recorded the entire Rager Viola Suite today, just a few hours ago. Um, I wore a cute dress, but I was cold, so I put a sweater on. So I was ha pretty happy with how it went. Um, I knew that... I would only really get one shot to record it today, so I did it in one take, and then um, I know I have tomorrow, Tuesday, and Wednesday that I could also use to record if I needed, but I'm happy with what I got today. Um, it looks good and it sounds good. There was just one spot at the end of the second movement that I wasn't happy with. I just, I looked at the music and I saw that they were double stops and my mind kind of freaked out and I forgot what the notes were. so. I just kind of played on the beats until I got back on track and then the movement was over all of a sudden. So it's not the greatest, but you know, if you went to a live performance and that happened, you'd think like, oh, it's, you know, it's just a performance, whatever. Next movement, okay, next movement sounds good. Like, you know, when you record something, it's so much, it feels so much more permanent and like you feel bad if you mess up because you, you have like an unlimited number of takes that you can do kind of you know it depends on your situation but when you perform it's so much easier when you make a mistake you know it's still it feels embarrassing because there's an audience and you're like oh what are they thinking this is scary but like you know that you only have that one shot while you're up on stage and then when you're recording if you make a mistake you're like oh well i should record it again because i have these unlimited number of takes and everyone's gonna know that since it's a recording but those extra number of takes can take a toll on you and 
I didn't really want to do that today because it was about halfway through the whole piece, which it's only about like 10, 11 minutes long, but there's so many double stops and like, I don't know, it's not taxing on my body like Hinemith is, but like, I still didn't want to do it again. <laughs> and, you know, I was happy with the effects and the characters and musical decisions that I made this time. I felt like it all went really well. So, you know, so what? I missed a few notes. It's not that big of a deal. So I want to talk about kind of the mentality that I had when I recorded today because I felt like it was pretty good. <laughs> so when we go out and perform, I already said this, but you're performing to an audience, it feels different, maybe you had to drive there, maybe it's cold out and it's warm in the building, your body doesn't feel super comfortable, and then you have to wait backstage while other people perform, and then you go out, and then you see the audience, you start performing, and your mind is kind of scattered, and you know, all of these things, like, and then the way I recorded today, I'm just at home, set up my tripod, my camera, my mic, just like I always do when I make these practice vlogs. And I played. I didn't have to drive anywhere. I didn't have to see anyone. It was super easy. <laughs> so recording these practice vlogs has been so helpful in like making me less nervous to record because the second you used to pull out a mic and put it in front of my instrument, I used to be so nervous. Like, you know, you put it in front of my instrument and then immediately I'm thinking you're going to hear every string sound. Like every time I move my instrument, you're going to hear a little rustle. Every single mistake I make is going to like it's going to go from microscopic to huge because this mic is right here. And now I'm just used to that and I'm used to hearing myself perform this regular <laughs> sweet. Um, like it's it was no big deal today because it was basically the exact same process that I go through to make these vlogs. And when I started making YouTube videos, which was just like two months ago, but you know, when I, the first time I filmed, I thought, okay, if this is terrible and super weird and super awkward and I hate it, I'm just gonna delete it and never have to think about it ever again. And if you kind of have that mentality when you're recording yourself performing, then it's a lot easier and you have more room to be free and do what you want to do musically because you're not so wrapped up in just being nervous and anxious. At least that's worked for me. I hope it works for someone else. So if you're not a YouTuber, but you are a musician, then the way you can kind of decrease this recording anxiety is to just record yourself more and more. And I'm sure, you know, you've heard it from your teachers, you've heard it from your friends, but like, I mean it. <laughs> like, that's what's helped me just making these practice vlogs. And you don't have to post yourself playing anywhere. I mean, there are so many Instagram accounts where people just post themselves practicing every day. And I'm sure, at least I hope it helps them when they have to record for performance or something. But, you know, you don't have to post it anywhere. You can just record yourself get used to setting up for a recording, record yourself, listen back to it so that you can, you know, be critical about yourself, be critical, but in a loving way, you know, be nice to yourself um, and just get used to that process so that it doesn't feel so weird and foreign when you need to record something for a performance. And that has just helped me so much because I wasn't very nervous today. I was a little nervous. Like, sometimes I'd realize, oh, like, the internet is going to see this. But then I thought, the internet sees my practice vlogs. And they've seen how I practice this. They see how I dissect it all the time. Like, it's really no big deal. This is a much more polished product than what I've been putting on the internet. So it's a little easier than the practice vlogs. So I hope that um, some of my ideas are helpful for you. Um, also, please appreciate my makeup. Um, my lipstick's a little patchy now because it's been on for a few hours, but it felt so good to dress up for performance again. That's one of the biggest things that I miss right now in 2020 is just getting dressed up and performing. I'm going to be so excited when we can do that again for real. <laughs> and I forgot to say that 
the entire performance, the entire Viola Studio performance is up on YouTube and I have the link in the description box. So please check that out. I will include the timestamp where I start performing, but really do check out the entire video because there are a lot of great violists in it. Thanks for watching! Mm -hmm.